Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, as usual, it's Jose here, welcoming you to another episode of Amazing Worlds, where today I am going to be reviewing The Heroes by British author Joe Abercrombie. Uh, now, this book I find a little bit difficult to review, so let, let me tell you why and um, um, what my issues are with the book. Uh, it was first published in 2011. It sits after the first trilogy in the first law world created by Joe Abercrombie and also after the events of the best served cold book which I've already uh, reviewed please check links in the description below plus the wonderful conversation that I had with Jolien from the Jolien Reads channel and Steve from Steve talks about books and stuff um, as I said everything below now this is the second standalone in the First Law Universe, but I would not recommend at all this as an entry point, even though it is a standalone. And I think the, the level, the quality, is a bit of a step down from Best Served Cold. And the reason for that is the plot is barely existent here. Uh, Joe Abercrombie is more of a character of a plot kind of guy, particularly in these standalones. But that, I think, gets taken almost to the max with the heroes. Basically, all the book is, and it's a good 600 pages, is three days of a battle between the forces of the Union uh, who are attacking uh, the, the Northmen, which is your Vikings here, right? So it's three days trying to conquer or take positions over a hill uh, with these ancient stones that are particularly of importance, of significance to the Northmen are planted, which are the heroes. The heroes is the name of the stones, it's not the heroes of any of the characters in the book. So that's it. So three days of battle, 600 pages. What we have is a massive cast of characters taken from both sides of the battle, right from the very general of the Union down to the newest recruits in the uh, army and every kind of level in between. So we've got uh, colonel, generals, corporals, all sorts of stuff. And then same story, kind of almost like a mirror image on the Northmen side. So we've got um, Black Dow, who is the king of the Northmen and his lieutenants and new kids that have just been recruited to earn their name in battle and stuff like that. And it's all shifting perspectives of the events of these three days from all these different characters, and these are a lot of characters. Um, now, Abercrombie is very good at just picking, honing, honing in, zoning into, picking quaint, quaint traits, little personality traits to flesh out his characters to make him quickly recognizable to the reader. It's a simple trick, but probably it's a trick that more writers should use, because over 600 pages, to get to follow, you know, possibly 15, 20 characters, you need something to grab uh, the reader and instantly get him to uh, be familiar with uh, whose perspective they are following the chapter from. The book is quite handy because right at the beginning it's got the list of characters based on both sides of the battle. So that's good and actually at one point I found myself like going back to her and trying to remember who this character was. Now, another reason why I wouldn't recommend uh, starting your dive into the first law universe with this book is because there are a lot of callbacks to characters from the first law trilogy and best served cold. So even though yes it could be read as a standalone and it certainly can, I think the enjoyment would be greatly diminished if you're not familiar with some of who these characters are and what their past history and background is. I mean it is explained, it is it is quickly flashbacked to, to get the potential new reader up to speed, but I think it will detract greatly from the enjoyment to start here. Interestingly, as the book is wrapped up at the end, and is um, fairly 
um, satisfying conclusion. Abercrombie is fairly merciless about killing his characters, and at the end of the day, if you're following a three-day battle from two sides, there's going to be a lot of dead characters here. Um, so that's all right. That that's okay. Is what you come to expect. But there's a hint of things to come, and there's a callback to best serve cold and old familiar characters that do not appear here in the heroes that may be uh, coming in the next standalone wreck country, which I'm hoping to read as well and do another in-depth conversation with Jolien and Steve. So there is that. Now, once again, there's no fantasy elements here. I mean, fair to mention that <laughs> one of my old favorite characters, Lord Bayas, the first of the Magi, he's meant to be this super powerful wizard who does no magic at all, uh, because all the magic he gets involved with is actually using cannons, which I suppose is not magic. But you know that whenever he's involved into anything that he's involved in, there's going to be a lot of shithousery going round and plenty to spare and share between lots of different people. So, that was nice. There is this weird, fairly pointless character. What's the name? Shiri? 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 Some sort of southern witch who is an antagonist to Bayaz. But her involvement, I mean, she's on the side of the Northmen with Blackdown. But her involvement is, is close to zero. She doesn't do anything. She doesn't bring anything here. I'm not entirely sure what her point was in this story. Maybe, again, we just build into something else that is going to happen in the future, perhaps. Um, but if it doesn't, then I don't understand what her point here was and, and, and what her deal is. It, it, it would it serve no purpose to the story. Um... Right, and then my final thought, my final sort of got me thinking about this book here, is that it is carried along by the strength of the characters, and there are some, as usual, some great conversation moments, uh, like in pretty much every other crummy book I've read. To me, some hints, some influences of the Terry Pratchett Discworld stuff were two sworn enemies who are there to kill each other can have a fairly civilized conversation about the fact that they are there to kill each other and how they're going to go about it and you know these are the times and and you know everyone is fairly assuming of the situation and, and reality and they can have a chat about it and walk away from it um and then live to fight another day so so it was just slightly uh what's the word i'm looking for unhinged, I suppose. However, as to the main themes of the book, I don't understand, because we all know that wars, but well, there's very little good or very little positives, if anything, that ever came out of wars other than technological advancement. So, so what do we need this book? What is this book trying to tell us? Um, and there are so many characters that maybe it's just an exercise on character building. And you have, you have the, the idealists that pursue uh, whatever they deem is right for the sake of doing the right thing. You've got your cynical characters that are just accepting of reality and try to make uh, the best for themselves. You've got the self-serving uh, ones who don't really care who they're fighting for so long as there's something in it for them. You've got cowards, you've got uh, brave soldiers, warriors... Um, you've got the loyalists who are trying to fight to gain back favor with the king. So there's a lot of different characters with lots of different motivations. Um, so in that regard, it is great. As to themes and plot, really, really weak. Overall, I enjoyed the book. Nowhere near as much as Best Self Cold. I think probably it would have benefited from focusing on lesser amount of characters and having a bit more of a plot because otherwise the book is fairly pointless it's fairly forgettable it doesn't achieve 
anything that I can see at the moment in terms of the first law world, but maybe this book is pivotal for future events. So I'll have to come back and revisit this. After I finished it, I was left feeling a little bit cold, a little bit like, oh, what was the point of that? But anyway, that is all I've got for today. As usual, thank you ever so much for watching. Please, please, please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. Spread the message, spread the love. Take loads and loads of care and I'll see you next time. Bye.